Welcome to the class students. Today we are going to discuss chapter 10 living and non-living things. Let's warm up. In your previous classes you have learned about living and non-living things. Need many five living things and non-living things around you. So you can write it by yourself. Write living things and non-living things in this chart. Let's know about things around us. Characteristic of living things. Let's begin. Things around us. There are variety of plants and animals that differ in their shapes, sizes, habits and habitats. All the organisms look different each other yet they all carry out certain activities called life process to stay alive. They are called living things. So students, you all know that there are many varieties of plants and animals, ki different shapes, size, habits, hai, habitats. Hai. So, but the main jo process is life process. To jinda rehne ke liye unka koi na koi ek life process hai. These all are living things. Now, things around us divided into two categories living things. Here is living things. Living things. Only plants and animals are living things. Non-living things. Non-living things. Chalk, stone, pencil, copy, book, table, etc. are non-living things. Now, Characteristic of living things. Living things are called organisms or living organism have certain characteristic which makes them different from the non-living things. So students, living things ki kuch characteristic hai jo different hoti hai non-living things se, okay? Now we have living things are made of shells. The body of living things is made up of tiny units called cells. Cell is the smallest unit of a structure and function. It is called the basic unit of life. Living things ki the smallest unit hai structure and function ki that is cell. Or cell ko hum basic unit of life bhi bolte hai. Do you know? Whale is the largest living mammal. The blue whale may be as long as 30 meters. Weighing more than 2 lakh kilograms, 200 tons. The giant redwood or isquia trees are the largest trees in the world. They are found in California, USA. The largest of them is about 84 meter tall. Get it, students? Now, the simplest organisms like bacteria, yeast and amoeba are made up of one shell only. They are called unicellular organisms. They are so tiny that we can see them only with the help of microscope. So, students, the organisms hote hai, like bacteria, amoeba, wo single cell se bane hote hai, and we call them unicellular. Look at this picture, amoeba, a unicellular organism. Most organisms are formed of many cells. They are called multicellular organisms. Their body may contain millions or trillions of cells. A newborn human baby has at least 2000 million cells. Each cell has a living substance called the protoplasm. So students are Hum or other animals jo hai, wo multicellular hote hai. Get it, students? Or cells may a living substance hota that is protoplasm. Now we have activity one to observe plant cell using onion peel. Take a fleshy leaf from onion bulb, break it, and pull apart the two pieces slowly. A thin membrane separates from the upper surface of a leaf. It is called the peel. Put a drop of water in the center of a glass slide. Cut a piece. From the peel and place it on the drop of water. Put a drop of saffronin over it and cover with a cover slip. Focus the slide under the microscope. The, the cells will appear as shown in the figure. Look at this picture, student. This activity should be demonstrated by the teacher. So, students, this activity will be demonstrated by your teacher, and that's how cells look like. Get it? Now we have living things need food and energy. All living organisms need food to survive. Green plants make their own food by the process of photosynthesis. On the other hand, animals cannot make their own food. So, you all know that plants make their own food. Bana de. They depend on plant and animal for their food. Look at these pictures. A cow eat grass. Humans eat cooked food. Living things need food. Here we have plants and animals use the energy obtained from the food to carry out a number of activities such as growth, maintenance and repair of the injured parts. For example, a mango shield requires a lot of energy to grow into a large mango tree. The energy is provided by nutrition. Here, living things show movement. Living things 
So movement, the change in the position of any body part is called movement and movement of a whole organism from one place to another place is called locomotion. Now animals move from one place to another in search of food and shelter. You must have seen a squirrel hopping on tree branches, a lizard crawling on the wall and a bird flying in the sky. Animals use legs for walking and running. Birds use wings to fly. Fishes use fins to swim. Look at these pictures. Birds fly with their wing. The shoot of a plant moves towards light and the root grows away from the light towards the soil. So students, all of these things, you know about these things. It's very easy. Ki agar koi organism move karta hai, movement whole body ki hoti hai, that is locomotion or har ek animal ka ek different type ka movement hota hai. Now we have check and wait. You can do it by yourself. Living organisms respire. All living organisms respire to obtain energy from. Respiration is the process in which food is broken down to give energy. To carry out respiration, oxygen is required. Human beings and many other animals like cows, lions and dogs get oxygen through breathing. It is a process that continues all through our life. We breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. Other living beings have different ways of breathing. An earthworm breathes through its skin. Fish breathe through special organs called gills. Like animals, plants also respire. During the day, they carry out photosynthesis along with respiration. But at night only, respiration takes place and they release carbon dioxide. So students, when you plants hai, wo in day, that means day time mein wo oxygen release karte hai, but in night they also respire, they release carbon dioxide. Look at this picture, breathing organs of different animals, lungs in humans, gills in fish. Do you know? Whales and dolphins have lungs. They come to the water surface for breathing air. Their nostrils are called blowholes from which the air comes out as if form a blowpipe and produces a shower of water. Get it students? Plants also respire to release energy. They break down the food prepared during photosynthesis to get energy. Plants breathe through stomata present on the surface of leaves. So, aapke jo plants hai, wo kahan se respire karte hai? Breathing kahan se karte hai? Stomata ke through karte hai. Look at this picture. Stomata present on leaf surface. Now, we have leaving things excrete waste. Excretion is the removal of waste and other harmful substances formed in the body. In animals, waste produced include undigested food, carbon dioxide, urea and excess of salt and water. Undigested food is expelled, it faces from, passes from anus. Carbon dioxide is produced during respiration, it is removed by lungs. Urea is formed by the breakdown of proteins and is removed by kidneys through urine. Excess of salt and water are also removed through urine and sweat. Plant excrete oxygen during daytime and carbon dioxide during night through stomata. Here, living things respond to stimuli. A stimulus is a process to which a living being is subjected and to which they react. For example, if something hot touches your hand, it jogs away. If a flash of light falls on your eyes, you close them automatically. Plants also so responds to stimuli. The shoot system grows towards the sunlight and the root system grows towards gravity. This phenomena is called tropism. Similarly, leaves of mimosa plant fold when you touch them. For this reason, it is also called touch me note. So students stimuli, that means you give them instant reaction. Like if you touch garam cheese, you will do it in your hand. Why? Because it feels warm in your hand. So that is a stimuli that you give instant reaction. Like our plants also give instant reaction. Like if we talk about the touch me note plant, you touch the leaves, then they go away from the leaves. So that is instant reaction. Get it students? Look at this picture. A touch me note plant folds its leaves when touched. Here, activity 2. Aim to study tropism in plants. Procedure. Do this activity in a room where sunlight comes through a window. Keep a potted plant at a little distance from the window so that the sunlight does not fall directly on it. Water plants every day after a few days notice how the plant is growing. 
you will see that it does not grow straight up it will grow towards the light so students aap kya karo agar aap kisi plant ko kisi room mein rakh do aur wahan pe ki reason ho jahan se light aa rahi hai to aapka plant usi side grow karna start kar dega tilt ho jayega so that shows the tropism get it now leaving things grow growth is an increase in size by the addition of new cells growth is a permanent irreversible change all living things grow puppies grow into dogs and kittens grow into cats a baby grows into an adult human being look at this picture baby child adult a baby grows into an adult plant grow throughout their life but animals stop growing after a particular age activity 3 to demonstrate growth in plants sow some wheat seeds in a moist soil keep watering them daily in a few days tiny seedling emerges from these seeds observe them daily in few weeks the seedlings become much bigger look at this picture look here living things reproduce their own kind reproduction is the ability of living things to produce their own kind it is a unique property possessed only by living organisms both animals and plants reproduce through the methods of reproduction differ animals like fish frogs snakes lizards and birds lay eggs which hatch into young ones look here look at the picture a bird lays eggs a cat and a bitch give birth to young ones living things reproduce their own kind animals like dogs cats cows horses and human beings give birth to young ones mostly plants from seeds and spores which sprout into new plants this is called germination pea gram wheat tomato and trees of mango neem peepal etc all grow from their seeds look at this picture a seed germination into a plant in some plants new plants grow from their stem roots or leaves example rose from stem cutting onion from underground stem and bryophyllum from leaf margin look at this picture a bryophyllum leaf give rises to new plants what do we learn in this chapter now we will discuss it in a nutshell the things around us are broadly classified as living and non living things cells is the basic unit of life all living things move all organisms need food to remain alive grow and get energy for carrying out various life activities all living things respire and reproduce the process of burning or oxidation of food to release energy is called respiration here is some keywords autotrophs green plants who make their food from carbon dioxide water and sunlight habitat surroundings where an organism lives a stimulus change in the surroundings that arouses some responses in an organism oviparous egg laying animal thank you students we will meet again in the next chapter